It seemed that there was a bit of the Wyatt's body that touched the ball on the way. So it's Mason against the world's greatest flicker of the ball, Sahel. 6.5 metres out, one against one. Is in the net, and that's 1-0 to Pakistan. Well, there's no greater exponent of the art than Sahail Abbas. Yeah, that was unfortunate, really. I mean, Simon Mason guessed right, and Abbas put it, I think, dead centre. Impossible position to save almost as a keeper. Well, if it stayed bang in the middle, if you'd save it, you look a hero. But to be honest, the odds, the odds are not in Simon Mason's favour from that sort of distance. Not the... If he's going to play an overhead, he's got to be sure it's going to get there. Just ten minutes gone, and the threat of Sahal Abbas again comes in now. High flick, goal number two. The man is a master of the stroke. Well, that was phenomenal. Top right-hand corner, Mason stood no chance there. And if we see it in slow motion, we might get to see the ball, but at normal speed, that would be like a rocket. Well, the threat we pinpointed at the start, and already within what... In fact, just under 10 minutes, twice this man has put the ball away. You see it again here, we get the view from behind the goal and we see how accurate it was, not just how hard it was. Look at that, perfect. Despite the lunge of Mason, just the speed is incredible. Yes, Simon Mason staying well back on his line, obviously to give him as much time as possible on his foot. Uh, unfortunately, that's what he succeeded in doing. Could be interesting. I think Simon might have to charge this one. Well, it's what the Canadians were doing, and the Canadian goalkeeper in the first match was so very effective, charging at Sahail, closing him down. It's a gamble, but if they can't get round you, by retaining control, and here he does charge into Sahail. But there's the danger. The player has it wide open for him now, just as we thought. That's the risk, because if they can flick it away and get round the goalkeeper, it's an open goal, and we saw it happen then. Yes, that was all a bit too easy, really, wasn't it? He, Sahal Abbas read very quickly that Simon Mason was coming and then just fed it wide, and there, we'll see it here again, but it was quite easy, really. Watch it how it goes across to Nadim. You see, Mason's totally committed. Here's Nadim, and really, it's an open goal. 3-0. And we're midway through the first half. Yeah. Britain don't seem to have any answer to the attacking corner routine at the moment. I think that's only the third one they've had. They've scored two. You know, the th Already converted by Pakistan. And he's still there, the most dangerous man in the world in this situation. He's still there on the pitch. Sahail Abbas. Is that a bluff again by Mason or is he going to go? Will he charge or not? Last time it was a disaster. Abbas of the orange boots. There it goes again. Can you believe it? There seems to be no answer. Well, it certainly seems at this moment in time that we don't have an answer to it. I don't know what, what would be better for Simon Mason. I think, I think you can't alternate, that's, that's for sure. I think if he does go, he has to go with a lot more conviction. Than he, than he certainly did the time before, but you see here... Yeah, he stays back this time. Canada seemed to have a better answer, I must say, because they charged virtually every time, and they conceded an awful lot of penalty corners, but they charged nearly every time, and they upset the rhythm, they actually were in physical contact with the Pakistan attackers, and it uh, destroyed their routine, and they never seemed to get it one time enough, but it needs a flurry of Great Britain goals almost for that to keep them in this tournament and any hope of qualifying from the from the pool Nadim skill on the reverse stick and that could be the clincher that was a wonderful shot on the reverse from Simon Mason perhaps a bit unsighted but it was right in the corner too sure at this moment who scored it to be perfectly honest but I think it's Atif I think I think you're right yes that was all you know it was a worrying thing at the last minute or two Pakistan have been gaining more control 
Well, what a knockout blow this is. What sharp shooting on the reverse. Ati, such pace beyond the outstretched reach of Simon Mason. And that surely is curtains in terms of this outcome of this match for Great Britain. A miracle. In fact, as you speak, Bill War is waiting to come on, but it's perhaps a bit late in the day to ring the changes. There's danger in front of goal. It must surely be number six. And it's Atif again. And that was like playing a drill, wasn't it, really? I mean, that was like a training drill. Pass, pass, pass. Open player, open in front of goal. And that was it. That was all very, very simple. And unfortunately, Britain looking a bit too disheartened here. We'll see here. Pick anyone you like, wasn't it? I mean, best. Mohammed Shafkat, a big, tall figure, tall by Pakistan standards, clearing it away and danger again with Nadim on the reverse stick, high and wide. Thankfully for Great Britain. Would have been a spe token names. <laughs> Their uh, PR work mainly, isn't it? I think so. So the other hockey nations will be fearing this because Pakistan are always dangerous opponents. Atif through. Mason is the only defender left. Great save by him, but it's in for number seven. And that time it's Mohamed Salwar. Well, we've been saying they seem to be able to score at will, and that was all again very, very simple, wasn't it? Britain had numbers back there in defence, but just... The only difference between England's conceding seven goals to Pakistan in the World Cup is that England they did at least get five. But now it's 7-1, it could be eight. Sadawar in the middle is Kamran. Just closed down in time, cleared desperately by Gallard. Limitation, it's almost too late for that with uh, less than eight minutes to go. And Pakistan are on a high. Nadim. Just cut out, but not far by Parnham. Sarwa. Mason kicks out. Clearance. This kind of margin of defeat today. Pakistan's glory days. Going back to Olympic victories in 60, 68, then 84. Three times gold, four times world champions. And those glory days through the 70s and early 80s coming back again in 94 to win the World Cup. But they've, uh, well, they've languished by their own standards in recent years, but this could be the signs of a great renewal. There, rubs his stick along the ground. There's Sahail Abbas who waits. Mason charges. Sahail Abbas lets someone else have a go. Nadim. There you go. then the other defence have got to come out with him to stop them playing the ball around the D like that. It's the biggest margin of defeat for Great Britain in the Olympic Games hockey. They came here with high hopes, but unfortunately today they more than met their match. And of course they met a genius around the edge of the D. The man that was the biggest threat, they knew he was going to be that. Sahail Abbas. Eventually he led them onto their way and the triumph by eight goals to one. And that really is a shock. Magnificent result, you've got to say, for Pakistan. 8-1, and we're searching through our record books to see whether Great Britain has ever such, suffered such a demoralising defeat at the Olympic Games. And heaven knows how they'll find some way of raising morale before the next game against Malaysia on Wednesday. Three games left for Great Britain.